my pleasure today to introduce you to some of the works in the Science Centre, Building 302. And this is an area that's open to the public, so you can come in and wander around. This building's special, it opened in 2017, and as part of its planning, we organised to have artworks either side of the lift shaft. So every level, on 10 floors, there's a painting or a photograph which you can have a look at, which fit in with the theme of natural history, conservation and geological sciences. Right inside the door as you enter on your left is this remarkable photograph by the artist Fiona Partington. Fiona completed her Doctorate of Fine Arts at the University of Auckland and she did it looking at museum collections and particularly the ways in which they have appropriated Māori taonga. This particular work, Inseparable Huia, deals with the two birds of a particular collection in Te Papa, which is a natural history collection. As you can see, the most interesting feature of the huia was the sexual dimorphism, the fact that their beaks are such different shapes. The male has the short beak, the female has the long, elegant, curved beak. Unfortunately, this meant that they were hunted to extinction as a result of European colonisation and people starting to develop a kind of a craze for the huia beak as a brooch. Huia feathers were also incredibly popular and treasured by the Māori. But the beautiful thing about this photograph is that Fiona manages to capture the nature of the relationship between the birds. They mate for life and as inseparable huia, they worked together to hunt for grubs. The male with his shorter beak was able able to break open dead wood and the female with her longer hooked beak was able to get inside and remove the insects. And as such they're a kind of a metaphor for an ideal relationship between nature and culture, one unfortunately that is not often achieved. In the design of this building, Patrick Clifford from Architectus left the centre part of the concrete empty for the big tupper work. Originally we were going to commission a customary Tongan tapa to hang in the centre. However, Dame Robin White, a distinguished alumna of the University of Auckland, had been working up in Tonga with Rua Fifita on developing a three-part triptych that you can see hanging here against the rough cast at the centre of the building. What she's done is taken the metaphor of the way in which eels, or tuna, migrate from New Zealand to go up to Tonga to spawn, following the direction of the Kermadec Trench. And that she's seen as a metaphor for the way in which Tongan people have migrated to New Zealand, often to work in quite lowly paid jobs in industry in the 1970s in New Zealand. And that's represented in this triptych by the centre panel, which is about the friction between cultures. However, what you can see as well is the kind of exchange of food and hospitality that goes on between Tonga and New Zealand. At the bottom, you can see all of the things that are sent, exported over to Tonga, like the palm corned beef and the tinned mackerel. There's also a teapot and you can also see the bell packet of tea right in the front of this walker shape, showing the kind of journeying on a boat to take these sorts of commodities over to Tonga. Up at the top are the sorts of things that Tongan people send to their diaspora, all of their relatives that have left to go and live in New Zealand. So you can see that the whole theme of the work is one of exchange and relationship across the ocean and the title of the work, Siu i Moana, Togetherness Across the Ocean, encapsulates that. A lot of the paintings in the Science Centre are by young Pacific artists or have a kind of Pacific theme. And that was a really conscious choice to try and make the whole scheme of the hanging of artworks into a kind of cohesive whole. This particular work is by a fine arts graduate, Graham Fletcher, who's Samoan. And it's from his series that he finished during his doctoral year. Its title is Lounge Room Tribalism, and what he's trying to comment on in this particular painting and in the whole series is the fact that 
cultural artefacts from Pacific cultures have been appropriated into a kind of aesthetic of interior design by Europeans, often without any understanding of the background and the ideas that are associated with the particular things. So if you look into this particular painting, you can see on the wall up above the television set of all things, three mere, which would have of course been used in combat in the 19th century and earlier, made out of greenstone or pōnamu, a canoe baler here on the foreground on a coffee table. And then over in the um, little area which is by the window just below the budgery gar cage that's hanging, you can see a, Sa a Solomon Island warrior in a kind of a mannequin form. So the whole theme of the work really points to the mid-century when modernism was the kind of aesthetic that people were opting for in New Zealand. And you can see by the manual typewriter and the type of chair and so on that that's his attempt to recreate that kind of aesthetic. But this is something that still goes on today. Often people collect um, artifacts, they call tribal artifacts, without ever thinking about the cultures and what they might represent present spiritually for the people that produce them. Up here on the fourth floor is where you can find this wonderful work by Richard Orgis. It's called Flower Idol, a colour photograph that he made during his last year of his MFA at the Ealand School of Fine Arts. Richard was really interested in the connections between how people relate to nature now and how they have done in different societies historically. So he's particularly keen to kind of create a sense of perhaps ritual in this photograph. It's called Flower Idol. And you can see that the figure, the male, has had his face and his hair completely covered in mud. So he's like at one with nature. And then his body is totally covered with angelica, beautiful cymbidium, orchids, gardenia, camellias, all of the richness, pansies of, of nature in its flowering floribunda sense. And one of the things that he's done that's rather humorous is included this pitcher plant um, of Daytura exactly in the position where the penis would be. So he's drawing attention to the sexualized associations that people often had historically in cultures such as ancient England where they had the, the worship of the green man as a kind of a fertility symbol in order to make sure that their hops and their um, different crops would come into flower and be bountiful. Interestingly, as part of this whole series, The Flower Idol, he also had an element of performance and used mud to create a kind of a sense of a sort of more primitive culture. But in so doing, he wanted to draw attention to the fact that we haven't always li lived such clinical lives removed from nature. Once, of course, everything to do with the seasons and the way in which nature operated was of paramount importance for people in order to survive. So this work is a kind of a reminder to people at the School of Environment to think about the ways in which we might want to be in harmony, but also to think about perhaps some of the medicinal purposes to create, create other consciousnesses. So this is a painting by a Tongan artist called Julian Hooper which is actually dealing with Aotearoa's colonial history, not only its history of painting, but also its history geologically, and a bit to do with the whole business of the relationship between artists and colonisation. Down at the bottom part of the work, you can see a figure who's dressed in military union, uniform, but he's angling something at the scene, which looks very much like a gun, but turns out to be a paintbrush and it's the paintbrush that he's used to describe one of the flanks of Mount Taranaki. And what Julian Hooper has done in this particular work is use the figure of an historical painter, Charles Heathy, who was a military artist and who really represented New Zealand in a way that made it look like it was empty and available for colonisation. So he's trying to do a kind of um, geographical contrast between the way that Heafy painted Taranaki and how the mountain itself looks today. As you can see, a totally different profile with Phantom's Peak 
peak in the foreground. So he's more or less arguing that there's a, a sort of a diagrammatic aspect to the painting which has more to do with Heafy trying to project an ideal of landscape than the reality of the geography itself. These photographs were made by the artist Lisa Rehana as part of the work that she did towards her Venice Biennale presentation, which was in 2016. What's interesting about them is that she has played off the ideas that she has derived from an 18th century wallpaper, which represented all the people of the Pacific, pretty much as they had been described by Captain Cook in his voyages. So that section of wallpaper, which was called Les Sauvages de Mer, or the, the um, Savages of the South Seas, um, didn't really give the individuals depicted any kind of agency. It represented them in very stereotypical ways. So what's lovely about this set of photographs is that she has dressed up modern day people, her contemporaries, Pacific contemporaries, in ways that echo the way in which the Europeans represented those Pacific peoples, but given them much more of a sense of vibrancy and aliveness. So this is a representation of Umai and Ubera, and you can see that they are dressed in the sort of robes that would have been the classical form from the 18th century from that wallpaper fragment. And here on the left-hand side is the curator of historical New Zealand art from the Auckland Art Gallery, Julia Waite, and she's a six foot tall woman and she's been dressed up as the captain himself. So in a way, she's, Lisa as an artist is trying to kind of deconstruct this idea of Cook as the hero and the Western perspective as being the only way of looking at the 18th century representation of people in the South Pacific. And instead, she's taking a deep dive into history using oral narratives and also the materials of the time in order to recreate what it would have been like to be back then having that kind of first encounter with Europeans as a person from the Pacific. Mm -hmm.